Greetings, everybody. Get out your King James Bible. Turn to Jeremiah chapter 23. This is the continuation of the Jeremiah series. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries, in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Jeremiah 23, verse 1. Woe! And he's not telling, um, he's not trying to get a horse to stop. No. W-O-E. Woe be unto the pastors. The pastors, the ministers, the priests, by whatever name they go by. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, saith the Lord. Boy, so the pastors destroy and scatter the sheep of his pasture, you know, the green, the green grass, the grass isn't always greener on the other side. I heard it once said that uh, the grass is always greener over the septic tank, but uh, I digress. You know, I could make this entire Bible study on nothing but sheep and shepherds, right? Well, a shepherd. You know, the first place you see the word sheep is in Genesis chapter 4 and verse 2. And she again, Eve, and she again bare his brother Abel. And Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. So Abel was a keeper of the sheep. He was the first uh, human shepherd, I guess you could, or you could say. And from what I understand, shepherd, S-H-E-P-H-E-R-D, is just a contraction for sheep herd. And you take sheep and herd, put them together, delete an E, and you got shepherd, right? And doesn't Jesus... Always talk about the flock being sheep? Oh, yeah. I was talking to somebody that, uh, uh, I don't know, they had sheep or knew somebody that had sheep or I don't know. But uh, he says sheep are the dumbest animals in the world. When the wolves come, the sheep will just kind of like just stand there and look at them. I mean, really? Really? Can I get an amen? Sheep in the churches. The enemy's looking at them. And what do they do? They just look at, you know, they just, they just stand there. Oh yeah, the wolves in the, wolves in the sheepfold. And the sheep are just bad. Boy, ain't that the truth. Let's read some verses about sheep in the New Testament. Matthew 7.15, Jesus speaking, Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Matthew 9.36, But when he, Jesus, saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. All right, let's go to Matthew 10. Boy, I could read this whole chapter, but we're not. Let's start in verse 5. These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not, but go rather 
to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. The lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now, anybody who's been listening to me for a while knows that Israel and Judah are not the same. Read Jeremiah 3 and verse 8. God divorced Israel, but not Judah. And then in Jeremiah 31, 31, and this is one of the reasons why I'm doing the Jeremiah series. But in Jeremiah 31, 31, the Lord says he'd make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Not a renewed covenant. We don't need that Hebrew root stuff. No. New covenant. Jesus, Jesus said, But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and as you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers. Raise the dead. Cast out devils. Boy, can you imagine uh, one of the disciples going to uh, some of these churches, especially some of these Pentecostal churches, and casting out devils? I imagine the place would be pretty empty. I don't know. Cast out devils. Freely ye have received, freely give. Provide neither gold nor silver nor brass in your purses, nor script for your journey. Uh, script is just a old... English way of saying paper money. Neither two coats, neither shoes, nor yet staves. For the workman is worthy of his meat. And into whatsoever city or town ye go, uh, ye shall enter, inquire who in it is worthy, and there abide till ye go thence. And when you're come into an house, salute it. And if the house be worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it be not worthy, let your peace return to you. And whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear your words, when ye depart out of that house or city, shake off the dust of your feet. Verily I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. Behold, I send you forth, behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to the councils, and they will scourge you in their synagogues. Oh, yeah. You know, this is going to be hate speech. Well, it already is hate speech, but, uh, you know, it's going to be hate speech. It is hate speech. It's going to be banned as hate speech. People just have no idea. And they will, uh, and they will scourge you in their synagogues. And ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, take no thought how or what ye shall speak. Don't think about what you're going to say. For it shall be given you in that same hour what ye shall speak. For it is not ye that speak, but the Spirit of your Father, but the Spirit of your Father which speaketh in you. And the brother shall deliver up the brother to death, and the father the child. And the children shall rise up against their parents and cause them to be put to death. Sounds like the kids were educated in a public school, doesn't it? Oh, wait, it's not public school. It's government school. Verse 22, you'll never hear this preached in John Hagee's church. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. And what name is that, Bob? Uh, Jesus. Do they hate the name Yeshua? No, 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 they don't. They don't hate the name Yeshua. But my New Testament was written in Greek. 
And that name is Jesus. That's the name they hate. That's the name that casts out devils. That's the name that millions have gotten saved by. I don't know anybody that's gotten saved in the name of Yeshua. Oh, that's right. You're going to be taken to synagogues and be scourged, beaten. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endureth to the end shall be saved. What? We got to endure to the end? Chaplain Bob, what are you talking about here? I was told once saved, always saved. Eternal security. I mean, I went to a Billy Graham thingy and said a 30-second sinner's prayer and asked Jesus into my heart. And now I'm, I'm saved forever. Well, I don't know what to tell you. Argue with Jesus. But he that endureth to the end shall be saved. But when they persecute you in this city, flee ye into another. For verily I say unto you, ye shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man be come. The disciple is not above his master, nor the servant above his Lord. It is enough for the disciple that he be as his master. What do they do to the master? They beat him and then they crucified him on a cross remember remember yeah they put him on a cross oh chaplain bob we're the we're the bride of christ god jesus is not a wife beater he would never make us suffer like that oh yeah they're idiots it is enough for the disciple that he be as his master and the servant as his Lord. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, yeah, they call Jesus Beelzebub. That's a uh, Greek spelling of Baal, Baal, Baalzebub, Beelzebub, Lord of the Flies. And if they call Jesus the Lord of the Flies, how much more shall they call them of his household? Oh, yeah. Fear them not, therefore, for nothing that is covered that shall not be revealed and hid that shall not be known. Everything's going to be known. That's scary. There's going to be people looking at my life going, boy, how did this guy get in? Whew. Verse 27. What I tell you in darkness, that speak ye in light, and what ye hear in the ear, that preach upon, uh, preach ye upon the housetops. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him that is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a farthing? And one of them shall not fall to the ground without your father. You know, when a sparrow falls to the ground, God the Father knows it. But the very hairs on your head are all numbered. Even if you're bald. Fear ye not, therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. Whosoever, therefore, shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I am not. I came not to send peace, but a sword. But what about that Christmas song? You know, peace on earth, goodwill towards men. Uh, I think there got the song about a different Christ. I, that's my guess. Verse 35, for I am come to set a man at variance against his father and the daughter against her mother and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law and a man's foes, a man's enemies, shall be they of his own household. 
He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. Oof. He that findeth his life shall lose it. And he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. And that's eternal life. He that receiveth you receiveth me, and he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me. Who sent Jesus? God the Father sent him. Remember, when you reject Christ, you reject him who sent Christ. Somebody send John Hagee's church a memo there. Verse 41. He that receiveth a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he that receiveth a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. And whosoever shall give to drink unto one of these little ones a cup of cold water only in the name of a disciple, verily I say unto you, he shall in no wise lose his reward. <laughs> All right, in Matthew 10, verse 10, 10, 10, take heed. Jesus speaking here, Take heed that you despise not one of these little ones. For I say unto you that in heaven their angels, their angels, do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. Do you ever hear that? That uh, little children have guardian angels? Well, maybe this is where they got the idea from. Little ones that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. For the Son of Man is come to save that which was lost. How think ye? If a man have an hundred sheep, and one of them be gone astray, doth he not leave the ninety and nine and goeth into the mountains, and seeketh that which is gone astray? And if so be that he find it, verily I say unto you, he rejoiceth more of that sheep than of the ninety and nine which went not astray. Even so, it is not the will of your Father which is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish. In Matthew 25, verse 31, When the Son of Man, and that's Christ, Christ was the Son of God and the Son of Man. He had a dual nature. He was God come in the flesh, 1 Timothy 3.16. Yet he was born of a woman. And if you can figure that out, well, I can't understand it perfectly, but that is what the Bible teaches. And I know I've said it a few times before, but uh, the Eastern mystical religions teach that man could become God. We could achieve Godhood. But Christianity teaches that God became man. Look up Emmanuel, God with us. What do you think that means? God with us. Verse 31. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory... And all the holy angels with him. Now, if there's holy angels, you better believe there are unholy angels. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. And before, and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats let you know a little secret here sheep marry well sheep have sheep for children goats have goats for children a sheep can act like a goat and a goat can act like a sheep. But goats are born goats and sheep are born sheep. 
she goats do not magically become goats do not magically become sheep because they believe in Jesus. Even Satan believes in Jesus. And if you don't believe me, read James chapter 2. Sheep are born sheep and goats are born goats. And I'll tell you what, they uh, churches hide that doctrine quite well. They call it whosoever will, Arminianism. See, they don't want you to know that God has an elect that God has a chosen people. Well, yeah, they sort of kind of do, but they want you to think it's the people in the Middle East that deny Christ. That's their chosen people. But they absolutely do not want you to ever know that believers, Christians, true believers, are God's chosen elect. No, they want you to think that Whosoever will, you know, anybody can believe and then they're, they're you know, they get saved. And, you know, we're in a war. And when you don't even know that you have an enemy, you're lost. You've lost the war. When you can't even, when your church will not even identify who the enemy is. Or that there even is an enemy. Or we're in a war. How can you possibly win? You can't. You can't. Which is why the world is messed up as it is. And one day all those pastors in Jeremiah 23, woe be unto them, they're going to have to answer for this one day. So when Jesus comes in his glory with the holy angels, verse 32, and before him shall be gathered all nations and he shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And he, saw, and he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them, on his right hand, come ye, blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was an hungered, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. See, their works showed forth their faith. Works are proof of what you believe. You're not saved by your works. We're saved by grace. But people that are truly saved will bring forth good fruit, good works. It just comes naturally. Verse 37, Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hungered and fed thee or thirsty and gave thee drink when saw we thee a stranger and took thee in or naked and clothed thee or when saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee and the king shall answer and say unto them verily i say unto you inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren ye have done it unto me then shall he also say unto them on the left hand Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Isn't it funny? Liberals, communists, socialists always call themselves the left. And then those that believe the Bible, they call the right. Where do they come up with this? Right here, the Bible. You want to be on the right or do you want to be on the left? Well, do you want to be right or do you want to be wrong? I'm telling you, sheep are sheep and goats are goats. Period. And what did the goats do? They didn't give them anything to drink, nothing to eat. 
They didn't clothe them. They didn't do nothing for them. All they wanted to do was sit around and count their money. Then in verse 46, And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. Oh yeah. In John chapter 10, verse 7, Jesus, Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Verse 10. The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is an hireling, 700 club, TBN. But he that is an hireling and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth. And the wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep. The hiring fleeth because he is an hireling and careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice. You see, God's sheep hear his voice. You ever wonder why some people can't hear the voice of the Lord? They're not his sheep. They're goats. They're goats. Goats are born goats and sheep are born sheep. Goats can act like sheep and sheep can act like goats, but they're still And other sheep I have which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. There's only one church, people. There's not a, a Baptist church and a Pentecostal church and a, a Messianic Jewish church. No. You are either in Christ or... Or you're not. There's one fold and one shepherd. Verse 17. Therefore doth my father love me because I lay down my life that I might take it again. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my father. Oh yeah. In John 10, 26... Jesus told the you-know-whos, but ye believe not because, but ye believe not because ye are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Oh, yeah. All right, let's go to Hebrews 13, and we're going to go back to Jeremiah. Verse 20. Hebrews 13, 20. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant. See, it's a new covenant, not a renewed covenant. Make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. And watch out for those Hebrew roots, people. You will end up denying the name Jesus. You will end up denying Paul as an apostle. 
And then next thing you know, you'll be wanting to bring sheep to uh, the temple and that they want to rebuild. Believe me, it happens. I've seen it. They always end up denying Paul. They always end up denying the name Jesus. They always end up claiming the New Testament was mistranslated by those horrible Greeks. Probably, uh, when you read the uh, Is Ray Lee newspapers, they say the most evil country in the in Europe is Greece. Why? Because they have per capita the most churches of any probably in any country in the world per capita. Yeah. I don't know how true it is. I've never been there. But let's go. Verse 2, Jeremiah 23, verse 2. Therefore, well, let's start from the beginning. Verse 1, Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, saith the Lord. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God of Israel against the pastors that feed my sheep. Sounds like those sheep would be starving, huh? Ye have scattered my flock and driven them away, and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings, saith the Lord. And I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all countries whither I have driven them, and will bring them again to their folds, and they shall be fruitful and increase. And I will set up shepherds over them, which shall feed them. And they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed, neither shall they be lacking, saith the Lord. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch, and a king shall reign and prosper, and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. Now, who do you think this is? Uh, Jesus was born of a woman of, well, Mary was of the tribe of Levi, the priests, the law. But when you look at the male side of who she was married to is Joseph. Christ is likened unto of the tribe of Judah. I wonder if somewhere down the line, if you go, went back into Mary's genealogy, if somewhere there was a the tribe of Judah in there somewhere. I don't know. Because Joseph was definitely not the father of Christ. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch, and a king shall reign and prosper, and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. In his days Judah shall be saved, and Israel shall dwell safely. See, there's a distinction, Judah and Israel. And there, and this is his name, whereby he shall be called the Lord our righteousness. Well, there you go. Jesus Christ is Lord. Where is our righteousness? By his blood. And if you don't understand that, if I have to go through that, you need to read the Bible big time. Uh, I would suggest the book of Hebrews. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that they shall no more say, The Lord liveth, which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. But the Lord liveth, which brought up and which led the seed of the house of Israel out of the north country, out of the north country, and from all countries whither I have driven them, and they shall dwell in their own land. 
Well, I'm sorry, but this hasn't has not happened yet. What country is north of Israel? Europe. So when they say they're going to uh, the seed of the house of Israel out of the north country, you know, the Lord's going to bring them out of the land of the north. What do you think he's talking about? Somebody tell the black Hebrews. I mean, seriously. Africa is south, not north. Europe is north. Europe printed the Bibles. Europe translated the Bible into the language of the common man. Europe built the churches. Europe printed the Bibles. No, they were they were infiltrated, but nevertheless, some of them at least tried to honor the Lord. So, verse 9. Mine heart within me is broken because of the prophets. All my bones shake. I am like a drunken man and like a man whom wine hath overcome because of the Lord and because of the words of his holiness. For the land is full of adulterers, uh, physical or spiritual or both. For because of swearing the land mourneth, the pleasant places of the wilderness are dried up, and their course is evil, and their force is not right. For both prophet and priest are profane. Wow. For both prophet and priest are profane. Yea, in my house have I heard their wickedness, saith the Lord. Wherefore, their ways shall be unto them as slippery ways in the darkness. They shall be driven on and fall therein, for I will bring evil upon them, even the year of their visitation, saith the Lord. And I have seen folly in the prophets of Samaria. They prophesied in Baal. Baal Satanism. They prophesied in Baal and caused my people Israel to err. Err. That's where you get the word error. Wrong. They caused my people Israel to err, to be wrong. Verse 14. Tell me this isn't any different here in the U.S. Or I'm sure the U.K. and uh, Europe is the same thing. You can apply this to the Vatican. You could apply this to the Church of England. You can apply this to almost every single denomination, demon nomination in the United States. Verse 14. I have seen also in the prophets of Jerusalem... The prophets of Jerusalem, and horrible thing. They commit adultery and walk in lies. They strengthen also the hands of evildoers, that none doth return from his wickedness. You think these people preach repentance? No! No, they don't preach repentance. They strengthen also the hands of evildoers, that none doth return from his wickedness. They are all of them unto me as Sodom, and the inhabitants thereof as Gomorrah. Wow. What did God do to Sodom and Gomorrah? He uh, gave them a shake and bake in the oven, right? Verse 15. Therefore thus saith the Lord of hosts concerning the prophets, Behold, I will feed them with wormwood. And make them drink the water of gall. What did they give Jesus on the cross when he was thirsty? Vinegar mingled with gall. I understand it tastes nasty. And make them drink the water of gall. For from the prophets of Jerusalem is profaneness gone forth into all the land. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Hearken not, don't listen, hearken not unto the words of the prophets that prophesy unto you. They make you vain, worthless. 
They speak a vision of their own heart and not out of the mouth of the Lord. They say still unto them that despise me. The Lord hath said, Ye shall have peace. And they say, and they say unto everyone that walketh after the imagination of his own heart, No evil shall come upon you. Everything's all right. We're gonna have peace. We're gonna have safety. We're gonna have we're gonna have wealth and health. Verse 18, for who hath stood in the counsel of the Lord and hath perceived and heard his word? Who hath marked his word and heard it? Behold, a whirlwind of the Lord is gone forth in fury. What's a whirlwind? A tornado is one. A hurricane's another. A cyclone. Behold, a whirlwind of the Lord has gone forth in fury, even a grievous whirlwind. It shall fall grievously upon the head of the wicked. Now, one of the previous studies, I mentioned the uh, church that was hit on an Easter Sunday with a tornado and killed some people. But um, do you know that Hurricane Katrina that devastated New Orleans do you know there was a gay pride parade that was scheduled to be um, happen uh, shortly before Katrina hit? Yeah, they were going to have a gay pride parade. Oh, it got canceled. Behold, a whirlwind of the Lord has gone forth in fury, even a grievous whirlwind. It shall fall grievously upon the head of the wicked. You know, there's not very many more evil places than New Orleans. Verse 20. The anger of the Lord shall not return until he hath executed and till he hath performed the thoughts of his heart. In the latter days, in the last days, in the latter days, ye shall consider it perfectly. Well, here you go, people. In the latter days, ye shall consider it perfectly. You'll understand. Trust me. Those that have eyes to see and ears to hear, that seek the face of the Lord, they'll understand. Verse 21. Speaking of the false churches. I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words, then they should have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their doings. Am I a God at hand, saith the Lord, and not a God afar off? You know, am I a God close or am I a God far away? Verse 24, can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him? And the answer is no. Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him, saith the Lord? Do not I fill heaven and earth, saith the Lord? Verse 25, I have heard what the prophets said that prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. Uh, wasn't there a guy um, in the 60s uh, whose initials are M, and then after that is an L, and then there's a K? Didn't he say, I have a dream? I have a dream, he was called Reverend. But you know, in his speeches, I never heard him not once ever quote Jesus. Not one time. And I noticed everywhere he went, there were riots. I have heard what the prophets said. That prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long shall this be in the heart of the prophets that prophesy lies? Yea, they are 
prophets of the deceit of their own heart, which think to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams, which they tell every man to his neighbor, as their fathers have forgotten my name for Baal. Now remember, Baal's just a generic name for Lord. Hey, Church of Satan can call Satan is Baal. Satan is Lord. To them he is. But, and it got so bad associated with Satanism that the Lord says, don't call me by that name anymore. Which think to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams, which they tell every man to his neighbor as their fathers have forgotten my name for Baal. The prophet that hath a dream, let him tell a dream. And he that hath my word, let him speak my word faithfully. What is the chaff to the wheat, saith the Lord? The dream is the chaff, and the word is the wheat. What is chaff? Well, the chaff is the part of the wheat that you don't eat. You know, it's like rice. The part of the plant. The leaves. You don't eat the leaves. You eat the rice kernel. What do you do with the chaff? The dried out brown leaves that you can't eat. You burn them. The prophet that hath a dream, let him tell a dream. And he that hath my word, let him speak my word faithfully. What is the chaff to the wheat, saith the Lord? Is not my word like a fire, saith the Lord? And like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces? Therefore, behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that steal my words every one from his neighbor. Behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that use their tongues and say, He saith, Behold, I am against them that prophesy false dreams, saith the Lord, and do tell them, and cause my people to err by their lies and by their likeness. Yet I sent them not. I didn't send these people, nor commanded them. Therefore they shall not profit this people at all, saith the Lord. And when this people, or the prophet, or a priest, shall ask thee, saying, What is the burden of the Lord? Thou shalt then say unto them, What burden? I will even forsake you, saith the Lord. You know, Jeremiah had a burden to warn the people. Verse 34, And as for the prophet and the priest and the people that shall say, The burden of the Lord, I will even punish that man and his house. See, Warning the flock is really not a burden. It really isn't. It's our duty, actually. Well, some of us, it's our duty. Verse 35, Thus shall ye say to every one to his neighbor, and every one to his brother, What hath the Lord answered? And said, What hath the Lord spoken? And the burden of the Lord shall be, ye mention no more, for every man's word shall be his burden. For ye have perverted the words of the living God, of the Lord of hosts, our God. Thus shalt thou say to the prophet, What hath the Lord answered thee? And what hath the Lord spoke, sp spoken? But since ye say the burden of the Lord... 
Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Because ye say this word, the burden of the Lord, and I have sent unto you, saying, Ye shall not say the burden of the Lord. See, these false prophets thought God's word was a heavy load. Verse 39. Therefore, behold, I, even I, will utterly forget you, and I will forsake you, and the city that I gave you and your fathers, and cast you out of my presence. And I will bring an everlasting reproach unto you, and a perpetual shame which shall not be forgotten. That doesn't sound too good now, does it? Woe unto the pastors that scatter the sheep. You know, I never wanted to be a teacher. I did not want this job. Trust me. But I kind of felt like the Lord had said, you know what? If not you, then who? And I know there's a few, there's some faithful people out there. You know, I'm not doing this for money. I'm not doing this for fame, fortune. You know, I've gotten death threats from uh, when I first started posting Bible studies on YouTube. They wanted me to shut up. So, you do what you can. And may I never teach falsehood in the name of the Lord. May I never do that. I hope the Lord will guide me in the way that we need to teach. But if you ever see a, a ministry that doesn't teach repentance, they're wolves. They don't tell people to turn from their wicked ways. They're wolves. Run to the shepherd and run away from the wolves. And like I mentioned earlier, somebody had sheep and they said, sheep are the dumbest animal on the face of the planet. Can I get a spiritual application for that? Yeah, church people. Dumbest animals on the face of the planet. If they had read the Bible, the wolves behind the pulpit, the lying false prophets would not be able to get away with what they're getting away with. But that's the way it is. You know, when I got out of Bible college, I wanted so badly to be a Bible teacher at a Christian so-called school. Didn't take me long to figure out you can't reform Babylon. It's impossible. They don't have sheep in those schools. They got goats. That's what they want. The sheep don't want to hear, for the most part, the sheep don't want to hear what God has to say about repentance. Don't want to hear it. Nope. Like Charles Spurgeon once said, there would come a time that instead of... Uh, Pastors teaching the sheep that they would have goats, I'm sorry, that they would have wolves entertaining the goats. And that's what you got nowadays. You got wolves entertaining the goats in churches. It's sad. Well, I'm paraphrasing Hat Spurgeon there. And then you get a few sheep that actually are looking for something to eat and they're dying of starvation in Amos 8 11 it says behold the days come saith the Lord God that I will send a famine in the land not a famine of bread nor a thirst of for water but of hearing the words of the Lord and you know what with some of these laws that they're passing now now this is March 2nd, 2021, with some of these laws that they're passing now, the Bible is going to be considered hate speech. Well, it already is. 
But uh, there's going to come a day when it's not allowed. It's not allowed. I think that's why they're doing the Hebrew roots thing. They can claim the Bible, New Testament was mistranslated. Paul was a false apostle. And his name really isn't Jesus, you know. You know, the New Testament, oh, it was in Hebrew and then mistranslated by those horrible Greeks that suffered horribly and persecuted for the name of Jesus. You don't see any people dying for the name of Yeshua, do you? No. Yeah, and you won't. Not going to happen. Matter of fact, if you talk to those of the mystical variety, if you catch my trift, um, to them, Yeshua is, well, one of the Yeshua is uh, Rabbi Schneerson. But he died a number of years ago, and they're still waiting for his body to resurrect from the grave. Uh, they're going to be waiting for a while, at least a thousand years from now, if you know what I mean. Oh, all right, people. Uh, I've ranted and raved for almost an hour, so... All blessings, praise, glory, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world, the great shepherd of the sheep. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen.